The movie begins inside a cafe where we see a renowned author named Olivia Perkins. She is busy writing the draft for her new novel when a young fan catches sight of her and eagerly approaches. She is brimming with excitement as she sees Olivia and unable to contain it, she approaches her. In her hand, she holds a copy of the novel Lovebound which is written by none other than the author before her. After saying hello, she starts praising her favorite author open-heartedly. Olivia graciously accepts the praise, flashing a warm smile as she signs the girl's book. The ecstatic girl happily departs after expressing her desire to read her new book as soon as it launches. Just moments after the young fan leaves, fatigue etched on his face, Olivia's boyfriend Kyle arrives after a long day at work. He says that he was busy all day long with Zoom calls regarding the launch of their new app. Hearing this, the excited girlfriend tells him that she has a surprise in store for him. Saying this, she turns her laptop around and shows the vacation tickets she arranged for them. She says that they always talked about going there but due to their busy schedules they couldn't. But now they can spare some time for a vacation. In the midst of Olivia's excitement about their upcoming anniversary and plans for a romantic getaway to the Haven Islands, Kyle drops a sudden bombshell. Out of the blue, he says that he wants to end their relationship. Shocked and speechless, Olivia tries to reason with him but she finds herself at a loss. Kyle remains steadfast in his decision and he is convinced that it is the best for both of them. After saying all that, he gets up to go, leaving the heartbroken Olivia behind. Just then, the fangirl comes back and takes a picture before leaving once more. Fast forward to a month, we see Olivia seated before her computer. She is having a video conference with her publisher, reassuring her that she's diligently working on the outline for her next novel. However, the reality is far from it. She hasn't managed to pen down a single sentence and is still deciding on the storyline. With a strict reminder from her manager about the immense pressure surrounding the upcoming book release, a new, non-negotiable deadline of 10 days is firmly set. Poor Olivia is shocked to hear the new deadline which is almost impossible. Feeling trapped but resolute, Olivia swallows her pride and makes a promise to deliver. Meanwhile, in the fictional realm of Tarovia, Prince Alexander finds himself engrossed in the pages of the captivating adventure novel, Love Bound. The book is penned by none other than the author, Olivia Perkins. While reading it, he yearns for an escape from his royal duties. However, his plans are swiftly halted when his loyal butler, Winston arrives. The man finds him engrossed in reading and asks whether the book is good. Alexander's eyes twinkle as he praises the novel saying that it has everything one could wish for. His face reveals his intention of wanting to experience all that he has read but his plans are thwarted. Winston presents him with a packed schedule of official engagements. These include a series of dinners, speeches, official visits, and, to top it off, a grand ball to be held at the palace. As Alexander contemplates his constrained schedule, Winston hands him a letter from Dr. Lee, the director of a marine life conservatory in the Haven Islands. Intrigued, Alexander opens the letter to find an invitation to a fundraiser at the Haven Reserve on Saturday. Excited, he exclaims that it has been far too long and turns to Winston. Yet, his excitement is dampened when Winston points out that the fundraiser coincides with the royal ball. Just then, Queen Patricia enters the chamber, bearing news that she just met Lady Renshaw Catherine. Alexander's face turns sour as soon as he hears the name Catherine and as soon as his mother says that she passed on his regards too, the man rolls his eyes. It becomes apparent how much he likes the mentioned woman. Her mother, either oblivious or uncaring about her son's opinion, continues. She says that it would be splendid to spend time with her. Despite Alexander's reluctance, the queen sees Catherine as the ideal match for him and mentions that she has already invited her to the palace ball later that week. Though Alexander is displeased with the arrangement, the queen remains convinced of Catherine's suitability as his future partner and attempts to arrange a marriage between her son and the lady. Out of the blue, Prince Alexander concocts a plan to evade his mother's plan. He quickly informs his mother that the royal ball clashes with his obligation to attend a fundraiser on the Haven Islands. The queen, taken aback by this unexpected revelation, expresses her displeasure at not being informed earlier. However, Alexander insists that his absence from the fundraiser could result in negative publicity. Reluctantly, the queen agrees to let him go but sternly warns him against indulging in personal whims. Once he becomes the kind, he would no longer have the liberty to move around as he pleases. He politely bows and his mother leaves. Finally, a little smile appears on Alexander's face. The scene then shifts to poor Olivia who is blankly staring at the empty outline screen of her next novel on her laptop. Cheering herself up, she puts her fingers to the laptop to write but nothing comes up. Despite trying again and again, there is no inspiration whatsoever. Thus, she decides to go and browse the shelves of a bustling New York bookstore. Perhaps reading some books would bring her some inspiration. There, she sees the copies of her hit novel and picks up a book to admire it. As she turns around, the woman unexpectedly collides with none other than Prince Alexander himself. All the copies of the book tumble to the ground, and Alexander is quick to offer his apologies, assisting her in gathering the scattered books. Observing Lovebound in Olivia's hands, Alexander remarks on his fondness for the novel. 
Looking at Olivia's face closely, he wonders if he has seen her somewhere. Their hands brush against each other, jolting Olivia. Her face flushes and she quickly rushes out after denying ever meeting him. She also remains oblivious to his royal status. As Olivia disappears into the crowd of the bustling New York City, Alexander catches sight of her photograph adorning the cover of Love Bound. It then dawns on him that she is the very author he had just praised moments ago. However, his realization comes too late. He rushes out to look for her but Olivia has already vanished amidst the bustling crowd. Back in her apartment, Olivia finds herself lost in solitude when a sudden, sharp knock interrupts her thoughts. She quickly rushes out to open the door. On her doorstep, she's greeted by her friend Katie, who arrives bearing takeaway food and a comforting presence. Over the meal, they delve into the recent heartbreak Olivia has endured and the frustrating writer's block that has plagued her. She wonders if she would ever get over Kyle and what if her writer's block remains permanent. Amidst their conversation, Katie spots the brochure for the Haven Islands on the table, sparking a suggestion that the getaway might provide the perfect remedy for Olivia's creative slump. She says that since she is free too, they would go together and have a girl's trip. Perhaps Olivia might find some inspiration on her trip, who knows. Intrigued by the idea, Olivia agrees to the impromptu trip, and soon, the two friends board a plan towards their destination. Arriving at the island, Katie's excitedly informs Olivia of the several different adventures that they can do. On the other side, Prince Alexander also arrives here for the fundraising event on his private helicopter. Since they have come a few days early, he asks Winston to go and chill out till the event starts and he would also enjoy himself. The two girls finally find themselves stepping into their resort room on the enchanting tropical island. While Katie eagerly heads for the pool, Olivia attempts to focus on her work, but the words refuse to flow. Frustrated, she decides to clear her mind with a leisurely stroll along the picturesque beach. However, her peaceful moment is shattered when she catches sight of her ex-boyfriend, Kyle, accompanied by another woman within the confines of the resort. Desperate to avoid confrontation, Olivia swiftly ducks into the cover of nearby bushes. Just then, a charming stranger appears, startling her. He happens to be the same gentleman she had encountered at the bookstore. The prince smiles down at her. Noticing her distress, Alexander inquires if everything is alright. She is startled to see him there. Flustered, Olivia fabricates a tale about admiring the flora, concealing her true reason for seeking refuge. Intrigued by her presence, Alexander wonders if she's seeking inspiration for her writing. As they engage in conversation, he apologizes for not recognizing her earlier in New York, unaware of her identity as the acclaimed author, Olivia Perkins. The woman soon overcomes her startled nerves and composes herself after the encounter with Prince. She then asks what he is doing there. Just as Alexander is about to answer, her ex-boyfriend, Kyle, and his new girlfriend, Tiffany, unexpectedly appear on the scene. Kyle explains how he met Tiffany three months earlier at a business meeting. Olivia is taken aback by Kyle's sudden change in behavior. During their relationship, he never showed interest in going on vacation and was always engrossed in work. Yet here he is, appearing at the same resort where she's staying, with his new partner. Kyle invites her to come eat lunch but thankfully Alexander saves her by telling Kyle that they already have plans. As Kyle goes away, Katie arrives there and greets Alexander. They introduce themselves. Before they can make some plans, Olivia thanks the prince for his help earlier, and quickly rushes off with Katie. Later, by the poolside, Olivia vents her frustration to Katie about Kyle's betrayal. However, Katie seems more intrigued by the charming stranger Olivia had been conversing with earlier, Alexander. Meanwhile, the prince explores the island's marine laboratory, filled with a sense of pride as he examines the impressive facilities that his father helped build. However, his moment of contentment is interrupted when Winston arrives with troubling news. It turns out that Dr. Lee won't be able to attend the fundraiser event due to some family issues. The prince knows all too well how the fundraiser is crucial for the lab's financial well-being. Keeping in view the importance of the event, Alexander decides to take matters into his own hands and host the fundraiser himself. However, he's slightly apprehensive about having to deliver a speech for the occasion. Later that day, Alexander and Winston coincidentally encounter Olivia and Katie during their walk. Alexander walks up to greet Olivia who curiously asks if the two men are on vacation together. Trying to conceal his true identity, Alexander explains that they're here as part-time consultants for the Marine Reserve fundraiser. After that, he asks if Olivia would like to accompany them tomorrow. He can show her around the various recreational activities at the resort. Just then Katie arrives and before her friend decides to decline the double date, she agrees. She tells Olivia that she can make Kyle jealous and moreover, it is an adventure that might bring her some inspiration for her next novel. After some apprehension, she agrees and they decide to meet up the next day at the beach at 10 a.m. As the two pairs part ways, Winston tells Alexander that he is not okay with how he is being around the woman. She doesn't even know his true identity. After promising to tell her, he asks Winston to play along since it is the first time that he has felt a little normal. Sighing, the poor man relents. Meanwhile, in a discreet corner, Ridley, Queen Patricia's security head, is secretly observing Prince Alexander. He quickly reports to the Queen, reassuring her that there's no cause for concern at the moment. 
The following morning, Olivia and Katie arrive at the beach for their guided tour of the resort facilities, while Prince Alexander plans a slightly more adventurous outing. Soon, they find themselves rowing out on the open sea. Amidst the gentle waves, Alexander attempts to teach Olivia how to paddle, resulting in a comical mishap as she hilariously topples into the water. Feeling a tinge of embarrassment, Olivia retaliates by playfully pushing Alexander into the water, leading to shared laughter between them. After quite a while of playing around, they come back when their paths cross with Tiffany, and Kyle who are playing volleyball. Seeing them, Tiffany extends an invitation to join in a game of volleyball. However, Kyle interjects, informing Tiffany that Olivia isn't particularly fond of sports. Offended by the implication, Olivia eagerly joins the game, dragging the prince along with her. Despite initial hesitations, they showcase impressive moves, ultimately securing victory. Irritated by his loss and probably the sight of his ex-girlfriend enjoying with another man, Kyle storms off, leaving a bewildered Tiffany in his wake. After a satisfying lunch, Alexander and Olivia opt for a leisurely stroll along the tranquil beach, unaware that Ridley is discreetly relaying their every move to the Queen. Intrigued by the mysterious girl that his son is going around with, the Queen instructs Ridley to gather more information about her. During their walk, Alexander opens up to Olivia about his personal struggles, revealing that his mother doesn't share his passion for marine ecology, unlike his late father who strongly believed in environmental conservation. He confides in Olivia that visiting the island gives him a sense of mental strength whenever he doubts himself. In turn, Olivia shares her recent struggles with Alexander, expressing her worries about the looming deadline for her new book. She confesses that all the adventures in her previous novels were purely fictitious since she has never been to any such getaways. Impressed by her creativity, Alexander reassures her, suggesting that her fans wouldn't mind waiting for her new book. As Alexander escorts Olivia back to her room for the night, he extends an invitation for her to accompany him to the Marine Reserve fundraiser. It becomes evident that a deep connection is forming between them as they retire for the night. Much for Alexander's delight. As the two get back to their rooms, their friends also come back. Alexander tells Winston about how much of an amazing time he spent while Katie returns to the room to find Olivia engrossed in writing on her laptop. Finally finding the much-needed inspiration, she has begun her new book. Soon, their moment is interrupted by Ridley, disguised as a hotel staff member, who presents them with a bottle of champagne as a gift before discreetly inquiring about their identities and departing. After Ridley reports back to the Queen, she finally becomes aware of Olivia's background, discovering that she hails from a working-class family. Determined to keep her son away from what she perceives as an unsuitable match, the Queen instructs her security head to separate Alexander from the common girl. Early the next morning, Alexander meets up with Olivia, expressing his genuine enjoyment of her company. Just as he's about to reveal his royal identity, Ridley interrupts, delivering a call from the Queen. The woman is shocked to hear Ridley calling him His Highness and referring to his mother as Queen. The truth dawns on her that Alexander is indeed a prince. Ignoring the call, Alexander musters the courage to disclose his secret to Olivia, admitting that he's actually a prince and had lied to her about his identity. Feeling deeply deceived, Olivia storms away, hurt by the revelation. Back in her room, she confides in Katie, pouring out her feelings about Alexander's deception over the past three days. However, Katie suggests that perhaps the prince desired a genuine connection with ordinary people without the burden of his royal status. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted by Alexander himself, seeking Olivia's forgiveness. Promising transparency and honesty from that moment forward, Alexander implores Olivia to give him another chance. Torn but willing to move past the deceit, Olivia agrees and asks Alexander to take her on a lunch date since she is starving. Meanwhile, Ridley travels back to Trovia after completing his assignment at the Haven Islands. He contacts the Queen, who inquires about Alexander's apparent interest in the common girl. Ridley, sensing a significant shift in the prince's demeanor, admits that he has never witnessed Alexander displaying such genuine interest and happiness before. Tentatively, Ridley begins to touch the subject of love, but hesitates, noting the Queen's guarded reaction. Strangely, there seems to be a hint of an underlying tension between them. Later that afternoon, Olivia and Alexander venture to the Haven Marine Reserve. There, Alexander confides in Olivia about his struggles with writing the opening speech for the fundraiser, admitting that he finds it challenging to articulate his emotions. After a brief exploration of the conservatory and a glimpse of the mesmerizing marine life, the duo embark on a snorkeling adventure. To Olivia's surprise, she finds herself thoroughly enjoying the underwater experience. After coming back, she senses Alexander's stress regarding the speech and offers her assistance with his speech. The prince happily accepts the offer. The two then spend more and more time together, planning the speech, writing their draft and finalizing the document. Sometimes later, Alexander leads Olivia through the woods to a secluded spot near a cascading waterfall. Here, he shares an important memory from his past, revealing that he used to visit this serene haven with his father before his passing. 
Reflecting on his father's legacy in environmentalism, Alexander expresses a longing to contribute more to causes like the Marine Reserve. Olivia, intrigued by his passion, questions why he's unable to pursue his dreams. In response, Alexander tells her about his mother's expectations, explaining that Queen Patricia prioritizes traditional duties over personal pursuits. However, Olivia encourages him to be true to himself and pursue his passions with bravery and honesty. As they make their way back from the waterfall, they unexpectedly encounter Kyle, and his girlfriend engaged in a heated argument. After Tiffany goes away, Kyle turns around and cringes after seeing his ex-girlfriend there. He awkwardly comes and apologizes about creating a scene. Just then, Alexander receives a call, prompting him to leave Olivia alone with Kyle. The man, grappling with regrets about their past relationship, expresses how lucky Alexander is to have him. Later, after Olivia comes back to her room, Katie finds her deciding to wear a plain jumpsuit to the date night with the prince. This scene makes her go bonkers and she opens her bottomless suitcase, in search of an eye-catching outfit for her bestie. After hours of going in and out of clothes, finally they settle. On the night of the Marine Reserve fundraiser, Alexander, adorned in his royal attire, nervously paces the balcony, contemplating how to break the news of his imminent departure to Olivia. Just then, Olivia makes a stunning entrance in her deep red gown, catching Alexander's breath away as they prepare to attend the event together. They walk to the fundraiser where Alexander finally presents his speech, announcing the establishment of a foundation to support the Haven Island Marine Reserve facility, and showcasing his commitment to environmental conservation. Following the formalities of the gala, the two find solace in each other's company, as they share a dance and engage in heartfelt conversation. Curious about Olivia's new novel, Alexander gently prompts her for a sneak peek, to which she hesitantly reveals that it's about an ordinary girl finding love on a paradise island with an undercover prince. There is a ghost of a smile on the prince's face after hearing this. Then, grateful for his guidance and support in overcoming her writer's block, Olivia expresses her heartfelt appreciation. In the midst of their burning love, as they lean in for a kiss, Queen Patricia interrupts, requesting their presence for dinner. As they join the Queen at the dinner table, Olivia notices the intimate gestures exchanged between the Queen and Ridley, sparking her suspicion of a romantic connection between them. She confides in Alexander, convinced of the underlying romance between the two. As the dinner progresses, Queen Patricia issues a warning to her son about refraining from making ambitious announcements without her consent. She then proceeds to make sarcastic remarks about Olivia, saying that she can never be bothered to read any of Olivia's books. Ouch. The Queen insinuates that Olivia's works cater to audiences with less refined literary tastes. She also makes a pointed joke about the potential inclusion of royal caricatures in Olivia's new novel. Olivia responds diplomatically, hinting that while her current work lacks such elements, it may evolve over time. Meanwhile, Ridley interrupts, urging Prince Alexander to join the donors for customary photos, but the prince hesitates. Despite his reluctance, Queen Patricia insists that he fulfill his social obligations to their guests. Once they're alone, Queen Patricia drops her facade, revealing her true intentions. She bluntly questions Olivia about her feelings for Alexander, interpreting Olivia's silence as confirmation of her love for the prince. Concerned about the potential consequences, the queen asserts that a common girl like Olivia could never fit into royal society. Feeling hurt and disappointed, Tears stream down her face as Olivia quietly exits the party before attracting attention. Outside, Kyle notices her tearful state and expresses his concern over her new relationship with the prince. He candidly admits that he always believed Alexander was a stuck-up snob and that she deserves better. He then shamelessly apologizes for his past mistakes. Despite his efforts to reconcile, Olivia stands firm in her decision to move on, refusing to give in to Kyle's attempts to reignite their romance. Once Olivia reaches her room, she confides in her friend Katie, recounting the events of the evening. Together, they swiftly pack their bags and depart from the Haven Islands. The next day, Alexander goes to Olivia's room only to find it empty. Just then, Katie sends a text message to Winston, explaining the situation. Realizing that his mother must have said something hurtful to Olivia, Alexander confronts Queen Patricia, who dismisses his concerns and warns against being overly dramatic. She forbids him from pursuing a relationship with someone from outside the royal circle, insisting on preserving the family's heritage. In response, Alexander candidly opens up about his struggles with prioritizing his duties over his own happiness. He tells her how she is also in the same situation as him, highlighting the queen's unspoken feelings for Ridley. Stunned by Alexander's revelation, the queen confesses her affection for Ridley but acknowledges the constraints of her royal obligations, fearing the scandal it would create. Frustrated by the suffocating protocols and restrictions, Alexander implores his mother to prioritize their happiness for once. Tired of conforming to societal expectations, he urges the queen to choose love. On the other side, Olivia arrives back in her New York apartment where she immerses herself in her work and completes the draft for her new novel. 
Unlike her previous works, she decides to give this story a bittersweet ending, where the two main characters do not end up together. Following this, Olivia engages in a video call meeting with her manager, who enthusiastically praises the plot of the new novel, featuring tropical islands, royalty, and romance. However, she expresses concerns about the ending, noting that readers typically prefer uplifting and affirming conclusions where the main characters find love. In response, Olivia defends her decision, arguing that real life doesn't always mirror fairy tale endings. Suddenly, a knock on the door interrupts their conversation. Olivia answers to find Alexander standing alongside Katie and Winston. The prince declares his love for her, refusing to leave without her by his side. To Olivia's surprise, Queen Patricia arrives in New York with Ridley, now her lover. Expressing gratitude to Olivia for challenging antiquated notions and prioritizing family happiness, Her Majesty blesses Olivia and Alexander before departing for a romantic lunch with Ridley. As the manager listens in on the conversation, she encourages Olivia to consider adding a happy ending to her novel, reflecting the newfound joy and love in her own life. The movie concludes with Alexander and Olivia sharing a heartfelt kiss, symbolizing their newfound love and commitment to each other.